Welcome back to the channel and this is the iPhone 15 Pro. Now I have been using this phone since launch and after many months and many updates and many charging cycles, I feel like I just needed to revisit this phone to give people who are still on the fence of picking this phone up and give my take on this phone and why you should definitely pick this phone up over other iPhones. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about its design. Now this design hasn't really changed all that much since the iPhone 12, which came out back in 2020, but this new titanium build with the rounded off sides really does make a big difference in terms of uh, comfortability. It almost feels like a redesign without it looking like a redesign. Trust me, when you pick up the iPhone 14 Pro and then you compare it next to an iPhone 15 Pro, the weight difference, one, is a pretty big difference. The 14 Pro is a little bit heavier since it's using stainless steel versus the titanium build here on the 15 Pro. And two, like I said earlier, the rounded off sides on the 15 series really, really does make a big difference in terms of comfortability. Besides that though, the change to USB-C is a super nice upgrade in my opinion, and is a pretty important change for pro users, and I'll dive deeper into that later in the video. But yeah, USB-C in my opinion is a much nicer port to have than Lightning since my laptop's using USB-C, my gaming handheld is using USB-C, uh, my power bank is USB-C, and about 90% of the products I use on a daily basis uses USB-C. So Apple ditching the Lightning port is such a great move in my opinion, and I'm glad Apple decided to change that on the 15 rather than waiting till the 16 or 17 or ditch the port completely for MagSafe. Now, in terms of colors, there's the new blue titanium and this new raw titanium color that I have, and it looks really, really good in person. It's probably my favorite color, although I think the new raw titanium look on the S24 Ultra looks a little bit better. Uh, but there's also the white titanium, which looks super clean in my opinion. And the 15 Pro that I've been using the most is the black titanium color, which I didn't love at first, but after going caseless for a month or two, it's not bad at all. Although the sides do tend to show a ton of fingerprints. So knowing most people who I've seen use an iPhone, you're probably gonna wanna use a case on it anyways. So if you're not really feeling the colors this year, you can always hit up my friends at Dbrand who sponsored a portion of this video and to let you guys know that you can pick up their new clear ghost case that won't ever yellow on you or their grip case so you can have the best protection for your iPhone while still looking unique. You can choose from a ton of designs on Dbrand's website or if you want something a little different, you can always go for their something skin to make it a little bit look like nothing. If you want to get your own grip or ghost case, make sure to check out dbrand by going to dbrand.com slash heymarkl or click the first link down below. Okay, so the other big change here on the iPhone 15 Pro is of course the action button. And I'll keep this section short and sweet for you guys. I rarely touch the action button to be honest. I think right now I have it set up to launch a third party camera app. Although you can set shortcuts and have a bunch of different actions pop up and do a bunch of different things for you. But for me, I rarely touch it. They did add a translation feature recently. So when you activate it, the action button can translate for you on the fly without opening up the translate app. And from my experience, it's about 50 50. You do have to set it up first and download the languages to use it in offline mode. But even then there's only about 19 languages available. If you didn't download languages before going to a different country, it'll really depend on your internet connection on how fast it is and how accurate these translations are. But yeah, for me though, I still want this action button to have multiple ways to activate it. I want one action for you know double press, one for triple press, and one for the usual press and hold action. Hopefully iOS 18 gives us that option since it's looking like we're getting side loading apps for countries in the EU in the next iOS 17 update. And I believe later this year, we're also getting RCS messaging. Now, like I said earlier, the iPhone 15 series now has USB-C, but the Pro and Pro Max has a much faster port than the normal iPhone 15 which to translate it into basic terminology, it just means that iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max uses USB-C 3.1, while the regular 15 is using USB 2.0. So if you're transferring gigabytes of videos or photos to your computer, it's only gonna take a few minutes on the 15 Pro series versus you know half an hour or so on the base 15. Besides the faster transfer speeds, you can also use this new port to connect an external SSD like the Samsung T9 drive, and you can use it to backup files or photos on here 
here, but even better, shoot ProRes videos straight to the SSD instead of your internal storage. That way you can just unplug the SSD from your iPhone and then plug this SSD onto your computer and all the ProRes videos that you shot on your iPhone will show up in its own folder so you can start editing right away. Now, whenever I'm traveling like I am now here in the Philippines, I don't even take my Sony camera out anymore. If I need to capture on the go types of shots or B-roll of just the scenery around me, the iPhone's video capabilities are way too good, but I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Now onto performance and battery life. I feel like the first month was kind of, you know, off to a rocky start. Battery was great, which was able to last me an entire day and then some, and this is a non-max version too, but I was also one of those users who early on had the overheating issues whenever I was using Instagram or the Lightroom app, for example. Now what would happen is I would just open either app without doing anything on the phone. The phone would just suddenly get super hot to a point where I couldn't even hold it on the sides. Luckily, after a month, Apple pushed out an update that fixed all of the overheating issues without affecting performance. So if I was to play the new Resident Evil 4 game on this iPhone 15 Pro, which runs really good by the way, the phone would get warm about 30 minutes into the game, but not to the level where it was too hot and it would overheat like before the updates. But where I do find this to get hot though is whenever I'm charging the phone when my phone's at around 20% or so. After about 10 or maybe 20 minutes, it can get extremely hot. So if you like charging your phone overnight and leave it under your pillow, do yourself a favor and avoid that and charge it by your bedside or away from your bed because it can get pretty warm. Okay, so let's talk cameras real quick. Now, just as a quick refresher, the iPhone 15 Pro has pretty much the same cameras as the 14 series. The only one that really got the bump in camera performance is the Pro Max, which now has that 5X telephoto zoom lens. This new telephoto camera on the Pro Max is 25% bigger than the one on the 15 Pro. Uh, and it's a 5X zoom lens versus 3X, which basically gives you 120 millimeter focal length and you can even zoom in digitally up to 25X, while the normal 15 Pro can only go up to 15X. Now, since I've been using the non-max version the most, let's talk about that main 1X lens. And as usual, this camera looks to be the best at any scenario since it has the biggest sensor and the highest megapixel count at 48 megapixels. I do love the fact that Apple gave us, you know, three different focal lengths at 24, 28, and 35 millimeters. But over the past few months, I've actually been going back and forth between 1X, which is 24 millimeters, and 1.5X, which is 35 millimeters. Both focal lengths are still able to output at that 24 megapixel shot to give you a much crispier and more detailed shot. And to be honest, everything I've shot over the past few months looks really good. The colors are neutral, not as contrasty or as saturated as some of the other flagships that I've tried recently. And it just has that Apple or iPhone look to them no matter which lens you're shooting with. Now, one thing I wish Apple will give us in future iPhones though are bigger sensors for the ultra wide and telephoto sensors. I think the 1X sensor on the 15 Pro is great. It's pretty good for low light situations and I wish that whenever I switch to the ultra wide or telephoto at night, it's able to let in more light just like the main sensor so that you don't have to stand still for three seconds for night mode to kick in so that you have somewhat of a natural looking shot like the 1X. Now as for videos, I've been shooting a ton of ProRes log videos via an external SSD like the Samsung T9 like I showed you guys. Uh, it's a pretty great SSD to pair with an iPhone. It's rugged and it's super fast. Now I do think the new log mode for iPhone is great and I think I've said this to a ton of people in person and some people online that the iPhone 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max is such a great camera to have. It's a good phone, but I see the 15 Pro more as a video camera than a phone. The dynamic range that you get with, you know, ProRes log and the highlight roll off that it gives you, uh, it just looks so natural and can easily match with my more expensive Sony cameras. So if you want to make really good YouTube videos or you just want to make videos in general and you're just starting out, the iPhone 15 Pro is a really good video camera that is your all in one device for social media, for editing, for filming, for photography and for gaming. The fact that you can shoot in ProRes log at 4K60 and record to an external SSD is a game changer in my opinion and something even my Sony cameras can't do. 
So I think the iPhone 15 Pro, as expensive as it is for a new iPhone, I think this is truly the best iPhone upgrade over the last few years. And I don't see Apple doing any major upgrades until the 17 Pro is out, which is slated for 2025. If you've been in the market for a new iPhone and you're looking for a phone that can capture, you know, really great videos, pretty good photos that can play AAA games and can edit 4K videos without it breaking a sweat, this is the iPhone to get. But yeah, that's been it for this video. If you enjoy this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and yeah, I'll see you all at the next one.